Hello, 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 everybody. Pretzel Road here, and welcome back to another City Skylines video. If you've grown a large city, you've probably at least considered building a passenger train line within your city. Perhaps it would help connect small villages on a map where the population is very spread out. Maybe it would connect a business or a commercial center to a suburb separated by large spaces or traffic. Perhaps it'd even be used to transfer people from a main intercity station to elsewhere in the city. Well, today, I aim to show you why you probably don't actually need them and help you see where they can be best used. Instead, I actually think that metros may be more useful for even those longer distance routes within your city with few stops. By the end of this episode, you should be able to use the most cost-effective method of transport in your city. And hopefully, I'll earn your like and maybe even subscription along the way. Enjoy the show. Now, people who have been here for a while will know that I tend to lean heavily on the numbers for these sorts of analyses, and that's exactly how I want to spend the first part of this video. Feel free to skip to the next chapter if you don't like that. Note that, for simplicity's sake, we will be assuming that you are only using surface level tracks and stations. If you want to know more about the other levels of metro track, I'd direct you to my main video on metros and monorails. Let's start by looking at the biggest piece of infrastructure on any long-distance route, the rails. This puts the train in the lead, as it costs $90 per cell to build metro tracks, but only $60 for trains. Long-term, however, you'll pay $0.96 cents per cell per week for those tracks, uh, but only $0.64 cents if they're metro tracks. Therefore, for any long-term system, it makes no sense at all to use uh, train tracks with some exceptions that we'll get into later on. And with stations, you can only possibly get a bad deal with the trains. Because train stations are meant to be placed few and far between, they cost $45,000 to build. The metro station, however, costs only $10,000, with the idea being that you build more of them. This gives them a clear advantage in terms of upfront cost, but it does get better. It only costs $160 a week in upkeep, versus $960 for the train. The metro station also generates less than half the noise pollution of the train station. But now, let's discuss the part of this episode that the game won't tell you about. The cost of the vehicles. It costs $100 a week for a train, and $60 for a metro. However, we must account for passenger capacity. The metro can only carry 150 sims, compared to the train's 240. And lo and behold, the metro is still cheaper. You'll pay 40 cents a passenger there, compared to 42 cents on the train. Not a huge difference, but still a difference nonetheless. With regards to stations, even if you do have to double up on them to account for the decreased capacity, you'll still pay less than half the price that you would for a train. With all of that said, it should now be quite clear that a long-distance metro line is not only viable, but an even better investment for the profit-seeking mayor than a train. Of course, trains are still worth the investment sometimes, right? There is one quality of the train that still makes it necessary in most cities. It's one of the few modes of intercity transport in the game. The fact of the matter is, that trains may be appealing because you already have stations for them. And they can also boast a cargo variant, which means you could already have train infrastructure within your city. That's not to mention its speed. There are also valuable qualities to the metro, though, most notably that they can have stations on any level. That means that, as long as your ground is flat enough, you need a minimum of just four units of space for a metro station. So, if you have two stations on opposite sides of your city, should you build a railway between them, or should you just place down a metro station? Here are a couple of scenarios to help you out. You may have already created a cargo train line connecting important commercial and industrial centers of your city. If this is the case, and both of the passenger stations in question are relatively close to your main cargo line, you'll probably save by not building a second track. On the other hand, you may have a train station from which you want to extend out a direct line to a far off and important area of your city. While a train may be appealing for a direct and long distance route, the metro is probably actually more cost effective. 
You can even utilize pre-existing mid-distance lines and create sections of track to bypass stations and avoid congestion. With all of that said, is the passenger train ever really worthwhile? Well, the simple answer is that it depends. The passenger train is obviously worthwhile in intercity transit, and where cargo tracks already exist. Outside of that, though, the metro is surprisingly useful in replacing routes over long distances with few stops, as well as its intended mid-distance transit function. So unless you really need the speed, or already have a large cargo network, you'd best tear down that train station and quit trying to create train routes within your city. But you know what you shouldn't quit doing? Liking this video if you enjoyed it or were enlightened by it. If you like my video style, check out this playlist of some more videos you might like, and consider subscribing if you feel like I've earned it, with notifications on, of course. If you're still here, you probably like listening to me talk. So why don't you check out my podcast, linked in the description of every video. And until next time, have a nice day.